Hey guys, welcome to Connecting the Dots, the podcast where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. Recently, there were rumors on Tom Zhu becoming VP of Automotive at Tesla and arriving at Giga Austin to help ramp up production like he previously did in Shanghai. This reminded me of the lost interview with Giga Shanghai's plant manager. Last year, I posted a video with an exclusive inside tour inside Giga Shanghai. If you haven't watched it already, there's a link in the description. The tour was arranged by a Hebrew-speaking Chinese journalist named Itzik and was aired on Israeli mainstream news shortly after Tesla entered the Israeli market. There's a link to Itzik's channel below. In this video, I'll cover a second video Itzik made, in which he interviews Giga Shanghai's plant manager, Mr. Song Gang, as they walk down the production line. Watching this video now, I realize it's jam-packed with insights on what we should expect to see in Fremont and possibly also Texas and Berlin. If you haven't done that already, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel if this happens early in the video. You can also support the channel on patreon.com slash connecting no dots for as little as one buck a month so I can keep creating content for you guys and send you my exclusive patron-only newsletter. There's a link in the description. Now buckle up and get ready because we'll get a close look on how Tesla is disrupting the way automobiles are made and disruption is never boring. The interview took place shortly after Tesla started sales in Israel and opens with a few words for Israeli viewers. Since it is jam-packed with revelations, instead of stopping mid-sentence whenever something interesting shows up, I'll just let the guys talk, and whenever a break is possible, I'll go back and highlight what was revealed. Jo 很多项的优化和改进 Less than 30 seconds into the interview and already there's something interesting. The assembly line worker is holding the high voltage wiring of the car. Wires are usually flexible and dangle and since industrial robots need to have everything at the exact place they expect it until Tesla bot arrives, wiring cannot be installed by robots and as we see here, this is done manually. However, Unlike most other EVs, we clearly see that this wire is stiff and doesn't move. There's a few reasons for this. One is that when Tesla first designed Model 3, they did try to use robots for everything. And to enable the robots to find the wire where they expect it, they started using rigid wires. This can be achieved by putting them in an aluminum tube and then bend it to exactly fit the car. The second reason is that although Tesla eventually installed the cables manually, using rigid cables also simplifies manual installation. All the workers need to do is to attach each connector into its socket and the wire immediately falls into place. And the third reason is that the best wire is no wire. In other words, instead of threading the wire into an aluminum tube and bending it, Tesla ditched the wire and uses the tube itself to conduct electricity. This simplifies installation, reduces cost and weight, and even improves cooling and heat dissipation. Joe Justice has a great story on how when working at Tesla, he joined someone who bent aluminum pipes used for charging. And in less than three hours of trial and error, they found a shape that dissipated heat faster and enabled Tesla to raise the maximum charging rate. Although he might have referred to another cable in another model, the idea is similar. And this is how these cables look. A few seconds later, the manager says how they constantly improve the parts so that each car that leaves the plant is the best of its kind. At first, this sounded to me like meaningless hype. Something like, yeah, we make our cars better and each car we make is the best. But Joe Justice's stories on Tesla Agile shed a completely new light. Tesla actually makes improvements and updates parts throughout the design, production, and assembly of the cars. They make around three changes per car model per day. So when the manager says each car is the best in the world, he really means it. Each car they produce is slightly better than the other that just left the same line a few hours before, and much better than one produced in the previous month. As a side note, we can see here and throughout the video that Itzik, Mr. Gang, and all the other production line employees all wear nifty Tesla branded bump caps, like the one I showed in the previous video. Tesla 
呃，在整个建市期间的话也，也也创造了非常多的一个奇迹。举个例子来讲，我们是当年的一月七号开工，然后当年就完成了所有的土建和设备的安装工作，然后也完成了我们工信部的一个审查。然后最最终的是完成了当年的一个生产和一个交付的工作，所以说这个在呃全世界范围内，在整个一个十二个月之内完成这些所有的工作，都是我们是首例。在这个期间的话，呃，跟上海市政府以及这个各级政府吧，给予了我们工厂非常多的支持。呃，在这边的话是企业和政府的一个全力的通力的合作。Uh, 带给我们非常多的这个呃、uh, 成就的一个可能性。When a Chinese manager thanks local authorities, this could be just lip service that he's expected to pay. In this case, however, it's far from just being that, because building a factory this big in one year truly is unprecedented and could not be achieved without major cooperation from local and state governments. The cooperation was beneficial for all, as Tesla was able to start producing cars earlier than anyone outside their fan base imagined. And these cars didn't just benefit Tesla itself, but also provided the region with numerous jobs and raised lots of tax revenues for the local governments. In my previous video, I mentioned how in one of the agile projects that I managed, the main thing I did was to anticipate and proactively remove roadblocks from the way of the two developers. This enabled them to keep running at full speed without having to slow down. Bureaucratic roadblocks are the enemies of agile, and we should give credit to Shanghai's government for realizing this and acting accordingly. This stands in stark contrast with the numerous roadblocks that German bureaucracy put in the way of building Giga Berlin. I have to say that many of the rules and regulations that businesses such as Tesla have to adhere to in Germany are positive and important, but some are just layers of obsolete muck that blocks progress and slows development considerably. Actually, our factory is very smart. Our factory is constantly doing communication with our vehicles. 嗯，在我们的整个加速过程，在我们的大灯调整过程，实际上整个的过程都是无人参与的。就是设备，我们的加热设备，我们的大灯调整设备，会通过 WiFi 跟我们的车辆建立联系，告诉车辆要开哪个阀，要把我们的灯往哪个方向调。那这个时候呢，车子会对这个呃从设备里拿到的反馈，它会行车电脑会进行自动的调整。就避免了，就是传统工业上的我们需要人工去调整或者人工去参介入这样一个过程，所以说整个的这个造车的过程，实际上也是我们的这个车辆注入灵魂以及慢慢苏醒的一个过程。This one is major. What the manager says here confirms what Joe Justice told us later on how cars gradually come to life as they move down the production line. Traditional automobile factories all follow the Toyota production method. In this method, quality is assured by producing each car to be exactly the same as all others, and performing expensive quality checks to a few randomly selected cars from each batch. Tesla, however, took a different approach. They reduced the cost of testing and fixing to zero by letting each car test and fix itself. The car's main computer, the same one used to run Autopilot and FSD, connects via Wi-Fi to production and testing systems, learns what to fix, and acts accordingly. Joe described this as part of digital self-management, in which employees don't even need a manager since the AI tells them how to manage their own work. Similarly, the cars too don't need supervisors, as the AI tells each car how well it's performing and what should be fixed. Taking the example that the manager gave of adjusting the car's headlights, let's assume that a batch of headlights arrives with greater tolerances than specified, which produces the beams to be offset. Since in regular factories all cars are consistently produced and only a handful of cars are tested, if the fault is discovered after the cars have been produced, then all cars produced with these headlamps need to be manually adjusted off the production line to fix the offset. But Tesla doesn't care about this. They test each car, and if the beams don't meet requirements, then the testing equipment informs the car, which then adjusts the beams accordingly until they perfectly perform. In fact, they don't even need testing equipment for this. As the car's cameras can see where the lights point and calibrate them autonomously, but why take my word for it, or even Joe's or Mr. Gang's, when you can see this yourself? In this footage, notice the red light strobing the car's wheels. People usually think of production as a line, but as we can see here, there are several stations in parallel. As Joe explained, breaking the process into different production cells enables the line to operate as usual through one cell, while trying and testing alternatives in the other. Each station has a red, yellow, green stoplight, 
and cars can proceed to the next station only when they pass the tests and earn a green light. And here we get a rare glimpse into a car as it does this. As the display shows, while the car is produced, it's in factory mode. This enables it to communicate with production equipment, test its capabilities, and fix whatever is needed. As the manager says, Tesla tries to keep bureaucracy to a bare minimum. This truly differentiates them from other large companies and enables motivated employees to show their mettle and express themselves. And here, we can clearly see that this Model Y uses a rear casting. 目前在一万台以上，然后也是把我们车辆是出口到了欧洲和亚太的很多的国家。然后目前来讲的话，我们的这个上海工厂呢，也是作为了特斯拉的一个出口基地，因为我们的产品的质量和我们的整体的这个把
Model 3 was the second best-selling car in Israel, regardless of propulsion system, while scoring a strong first place in terms of revenue. Tesla Shanghai is definitely rocking it, growing fast and producing cars, which as Sandy Munro once said, have extremely high quality like you would expect from ultra-expensive Bentleys. What's more amazing is that both the cars we saw here and the process itself are all obsolete. As cutting edge as they might seem compared to other automakers, this is last year's news. And for Tesla, last year is like saying last decade. So much seems the same, yet everything has changed. I started with Tom Zhu, so I'll end with him. This is what former Tesla board member Steve Wesley had to say about Tom. That's why he's brought Tom Zhu in, the mastermind manufacturing genius from China. And think about this for a minute. The China facility in Shanghai producing 40% of all Tesla vehicles today. This is the guy who got the plant up and running in 13 months, 10 million square feet facility. If he can do what he did in the Austin plant, uh, what he did in Shanghai, that'll be a game changer for Tesla. All the speed and efficiency we saw in Giga Shanghai will now be applied to Fremont and Austin. I don't know about you, but to me, this seems bullish. Let me know what you think. What part of the production did you like the most? Are you bullish as I am about Tesla's other factories? And what chance do GM, Ford, and BMW have in catching up with Tesla? Let me know below. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe to help me start growing the channel. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon for as low as one buck a month. It'll really help me invest more time so I can deliver quality content faster. So if you want to support the channel and get access to my exclusive patron-only newsletter, you can head over to patreon.com and together we can make this channel grow. A big thank you to Scott Dahlrimple for the super thanks. And a special shout out to my latest patrons, Daxum, Electric Will, Eric Elfner, Cookie UK, Wojciech Kraminski, and Durek Zakura. And to all my patrons, you guys rock. Twitter is becoming the place to be, so I invite you to follow me there. I'm connecting no dots. I tweet several times a day with everything from long threads analyzing Tesla matters to making memes and hanging out with you guys. So, see you there. Until next time, I am connecting the dots, and you are amazing.